Hey guys, welcome to the official first episode of the Brew City Lounge. Lots of Bucks and Brewers talk to dive into. Drew Holiday, here to stay. How much longer will the Brewers offense continue to struggle? And how bad exactly is that knee injury for Giannis? That and much more. Oh, and don't forget to subscribe to the show wherever you get your podcast. Available on all platforms. Let's go! Ladies and gentlemen... Good evening. Happy Friday. I uh, hope everybody is doing well. Welcome to the first episode of the Brew City Lounge. I am your host, Brandon. You can go ahead and follow me on Twitter at Wisco underscore Brandon. Um, very active on Twitter. Um, go ahead and follow the show um, on our social medias. On Twitter, we are at Brew City Pod. On Facebook, at Brew City Lounge. Um, I'm super excited about this show. I mean, I really am. Um, Brew City Lounge. Um, Obviously, the name of the show kind of gives it away. Um, We are on a, you know, beer city, Brew City. I mean, what what more can you ask for? Um, We we got a lot to talk about. We're going to dive into all things Bucks and Brewers. Um, I got Dario Melendez coming up on the show this evening. We got a couple fun guests lined up for next week. Um, but yeah, we're in the, the lounge room network. Um, go ahead and follow them on Twitter at lounge room net. Um, super excited um, to be a part of that network. Um, shout out to the president, uh, Juan, um, believe you can follow him on Twitter at bears fanatico 94. Um, he's been absolutely awesome. Um, walking through you know, the whole process of getting a show together, getting it running, um, what's needed. Uh, we were on FaceTime a couple of days ago. Um, he's walking me through on what, um, you know, what to do and make sure I had everything lined up. So he's, he's been awesome. Shout out to him. Um, vice president, um, Rhino, follow him on Twitter at sports talk Rhino. Um, super excited, um, to be a part of this network. And I'm just really excited for this show. Um, I mean, I'm a, I'm, I'm from Milwaukee, born and raised. Um, was gone for, you know, a while. Uh, what was it? 10, 12 years, something like that. Um, was served in the, in the military. And now I'm back home. I just moved back here last, uh, 2019. I moved back here, um, in the summer of 2019. So there's a lot that I need to learn about this city. There's a lot that, uh, I could use, you know, a lot of advice on where's the best place to grab a beer. Where's the best place to grab a burger, a fish fry, you know, all the fun stuff to do. Um, hopefully with COVID-19, um, in the rear view, hopefully, um, we can get back to kind of live in our life the way we used to be. And then in Milwaukee, there's not a better place. Um, my opinion, I've been all over the world and obviously I'm a homer. I love my home, love my city and I love my teams. And that's why I'm doing this podcast. Um, I approached Juan about it, uh, doing a podcast about the bucks and the brewers. You don't find too many people, um, you know, doing podcasts on, uh, the bucks or brewers. You have a lot of football, um, speaking of football, follow me um, on Sundays. Follow the 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 football podcast we do, the Packers. It's a Title Town Lounge. Um, give us a, a thumbs up. Give us a follow. Um, we go live every Sunday. Always got fun guests lined up, um, and it's something that we're 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 super stoked about. Um, there's always stuff to talk about the NFL. Um, if you guys are just tuning in, I uh, appreciate it. Um, we're getting started here. Welcome to the Brew City Lounge. Um, follow us on Twitter at Brew City Pod on Facebook, at Brew City Lounge. Um, but yeah, uh, Brewer season just kicking off. Um, lots to dive into already in the season. You know, is that pitching going to sustain the success that it's had? Are the bats ever going to wake up? You, you flip over to the basketball side in Milwaukee. Is Giannis okay? I mean, really, it's something that you think he is. You know, you you hear about Bud uh, in his pre- uh pre and post game presser and he kind of knocks it you know to the side and, and says he's not worried uh yeah this is never the type of guy to miss multiple games um he never has been he never will um unless he absolutely has to um and he's now gone i believe uh the last four games and the last i believe it's like six out of the last 11 so i mean there's some concern there there's something uh there's something you know that's worrisome uh, so we're going to talk about that we're going to get into drew holiday signing the extension. We're going to get into, um, you know, the early season successes and failures so far of the Brewers. I mean, 
three and four record. Um, so we're, we're going to get into some of that um, and, uh, and talk about what, what needs to happen for the Bucks to, uh, to get into the playoffs uh, and, and make a long run. Obviously, they're going to get into the playoffs. What's it going to take for them to get into the Eastern Conference Finals and beyond? Because when you got a player like Giannis, you got a player like Drew Holiday, you know, Chris Middleton, uh, really good bench, very athletic bench. Um, I think Eastern Conference Finals are the floor. Like everything above that is expected now. No more Eastern Conference Finals. No more uh, second round. No more, uh, you know, not making it through to the finals. And you got a player like Giannis. Uh, you know, it's time to take that step. Uh, it's time to take that that final step for him and, and complete his journey as a back to back. Uh, MVP, Defensive Player of the Year, in my opinion. Uh, I'm completely homer. He's the best player in the NBA. You know, Jake says trade Middleton. I, I don't know about that, man. I don't know. We're going to get into that. Uh, I got I got a lot of stuff lined up for that um, with the whole Middleton thing. I know he's not a fan favorite right now, especially for what happened uh, last night, going 6 for 27. So we're going to get into Chris Middleton and and in and a, and a season struggles he continues to have time to time. Um, but welcome to the show. Welcome to the podcast. Um, super excited for you guys to, to follow me on this journey. Um, and I want to hear from you guys. You know, it's a solo podcast. It's going to be fun. It's going to be real fun. There's, I mean, we're in the thick of the buck season. The Brewers are just kicking off. Just beat the Cubs on, in a, in a three-game set. Um, lost a devastating fashion uh yesterday against the cardinals um two more games coming up this weekend i don't know why they have a split with the thursday into friday and then saturday sunday but i guess that's a it's an early season i think they're doing it for the weather um reasons but i'm not for trading middleton uh i think middleton is a very important you know how the how this team moves forward you're not going to find many many guys with you know your number three option or number two option, however you classify Middleton. And that's a, a discussion we're going to have later on in the show. I don't know how many guys are averaging over 20 points at, at maybe your number three. In my opinion, he's probably the number third option. Money-wise, you know, he's a max guy. I understand that. But um, he's darn good for your number two or three option, no matter which way you look at it. I know everybody wants the James Hardens and the Bradley Beals and the C.J. McCollums and, you know, Kyrie Irvings and Anthony Davises, you know, but – this is Milwaukee, and this is this is what we're used to. Um, we're always overlooked, and that's okay because we're one day we're going to take it uh, to the next step, and and this city's going to get you know the championship that it's so rightfully deserved. And super excited for for what lies ahead for the Bucks. I hope uh, I think they have big things coming, um, and so I'm 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 pretty excited about 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 what's coming up with them. So a lot to get into. Um, we got a couple guests lined up for next week. We're going to run the shows primarily on Tuesdays and uh, Fridays, you know, barring, you know, guests appear every now and then different times. Um, just stay tuned. Follow us on social media. Again, if you're just joining the show, follow me on Twitter. I'm your host, Brandon. Go ahead and follow me on Twitter at, uh, at Wisco underscore Brandon. Uh, and then follow the, uh, the show's uh, social media pages. Um, we're on Twitter at Brew City Pod. Um, and on Facebook at Brew City Lounge. So we're we're just kicking off a brand new network, um, Lounge Room Network. So many fun um, guys are are in the network. So many different um, fan bases. So many different backgrounds all over the country. Um, we're super stoked um, to work with these guys um, uh, to lean on them and, and, and have a lot of fun with the show. Um, so we're just kicking off now. Just waiting for Dario to jump on, um, but we can jump right into it. I mean, I want to start off the show, something that kind of caught my eye uh, last Sunday. It was Easter. Um, wasn't expecting it. Um, Drew Holiday, max contract. Uh, you can say what you want about Drew Holiday. Um, you can say what you want about, you know, he's not Kyrie. He's not James Harden. I mean, he's not Russell Westbrook. I, I disagree with all that. In my opinion, Drew Holiday is the best two-way guard in the NBA. And you could make an argument that he's the best two-way player in the NBA. Now, his teammate, Giannis, will, you know, probably give you a little bit of a, an argument because he's just as good, if not better. Obviously, he's the MVP and the defensive player of the year um, from last year. 
Drew Holiday, you get Drew Holiday four years, 135. I, I know the deal has, you know, it has its opportunity to work up to 160, but I think it's a great deal. I mean, I think it's phenomenal. I mean, he's, in my opinion, you he, he, he could definitely argue that he's a top 10 point guard in the NBA. And I think that, you know, may, maybe it's a stretch saying he's a top five, but he's up there. Like he's there. He's, he gets overlooked and he has been overlooked for, uh, his whole career. I mean, he was drafted into Philly and Philly didn't really do much with him. They didn't, you know, didn't take the time. Didn't, it was a disaster in his early seasons in Philly. And then he goes down to new Orleans and new Orleans is kind of like Milwaukee. It's kind of one of those small market. Um, if you can't grab a superstar, you hope that you can draft well. And if you hit on your draft, so then you're going to, that's what you're going to use to get deep into the playoffs. And then sometimes that doesn't even work. And we're running into those issues here in Milwaukee with our team. Um, but I love Drew Holiday. I mean, you're talking about a point guard who's averaging 17.3 points per game, four and a half rebounds per game, and five and a half assists per game. While on the other end, outside of the bigs on that team, he's guarding the best player. I think Kevin Durant, Paul George, both of those guys who are prim- really good scorers. Kevin Durant's probably the best scorer in the NBA and has been for the last 10 years, publicly says Drew Holiday is the best defender he has ever played against. Kevin Durant's almost seven feet tall. Drew Holiday is not. That's saying something. That's saying something to who Drew Holiday is. I know he's 30 years old, and and people look at him, "Ah, you're going to pay a guy 30 years, four years from now, you're going to be paying him X amount of dollars. Okay. That's the NBA. I mean, that's what the NBA, the going rate of the NBA is. I mean, you're talking about guys like Russell Westbrook, John Wall, great players. They're awesome players. They do a lot of good things outside of the NBA. Russell Westbrook has not won anywhere outside of when he was here with Kevin Durant out in Oklahoma City. John Wall. I mean, these guys, listen to these deals real quick. Listen to these deals real quick. You got Drew Holiday for four years at 135. Has the opportunity to get to 160, and I get that. That's great. Russell Westbrook, four years, $171 million. Four years, $171 million. Get it. He's a triple double guy. He's going to get you 20, 10, and 10 almost every night, but he's also going to lose. You're going to lose that game. And that's not a knock on him. He's way better at his job than I am at mine. That is not a knock on him at all. But I'm taking Drew Holiday and I'm a homer. You can look around and you can see that. That's okay. I'm still taking Drew Holiday. I want a point guard that can defend the best player on the other team, minus a big play, minus a big. That's what you got Giannis and Brooke and Brooke Lopez for. John Wall, four years. $170 $170 million. Now I know he was affected by, by an injury. I believe it was in his Achilles and he got traded. He's now in Houston. So four years, 170, almost identical to Russell Westbrook, another point guard in which I am taking uh, Drew Holiday over. I'm taking Drew Holiday over, over John Wall. And it's not, again, no disrespect to John Wall. You're talking about a guy that can't stay healthy in John Wall. I mean, Adidas left him, left the, his contract, his endorsement. I'm taking Drew Holiday, again, for the simple reasons that the guy just locks down the other team's best player, and he does it on a nightly basis. I mean, we're talking last five games of Drew Holiday before last night. At, at the Clippers, 24 points, 7 assists. At the Lakers, 28 points, 6 assists. At Portland, 22 points, 10 assists. At Sacramento, in a game where Giannis didn't play, 33 points, 11 assists. And at Golden State, 24 points, five assists. I mean, it's, it's a nightly thing for this guy. He knows, what, he knows what he's doing. I mean, he's the best two-way guard in the NBA, and I really, really do love him. And I, I'm glad he's in Milwaukee, and I think he fits really well with Giannis and Chris Middleton. And I know, you know, the issues that I think the team is having this year has just been, it's been the injury concerns. You know, it's been, it's been, you know, even Drew Holiday. I mean, the Bucks record without Drew Holiday, and he missed 11 games due to COVID. He suffered from COVID uh, early in the season. And Adam, thanks for joining the show, brother. Um, he missed the first, he missed a couple games in, in the early part of the season. The Bucks went five and six without him. Five and six. If you don't think that he makes a difference, listen to this. His record with Drew Holiday, 27 and 12. 27 and 12 with Drew Holiday. Again, you can think that you can put it in the back burner. He's not who he used to be. He's not, you know, what he what he should be. I think he's real great. I, I think he's I think he's great. I know he went off 
some people say it went, <laughs> went off on the rails. I, however you word it, however you think. Uh, I mean, he said that um, he mentioned that the Bucks could be like the Warriors um, uh, dynasty. And I don't, I don't know if that's, I don't know if that's really true. I don't know, you know, if, uh, if that's something that, you know, they could uh, sustain. I mean, I don't know if that puts any pressure on them. I mean, I, I can see where he's saying, I think he's saying like, okay, so he got that four-year deal. Him and Giannis and Chris Middleton are all locked up together. I believe it goes through, and I know uh, my buddy Jake will correct me if I'm wrong. I believe it goes through the 23 season. I could be wrong, but I think it goes through the 23 um, season, Have you know, barring that they don't get, none of them get injured or, or hurt. Um, so they're locked up together. I'm, so I can see where he's saying that. Um, you know, I think in the long run, you know, you're not going to, maybe you don't see Drew Holiday make such a huge difference, um, you know, right now. And I think he's still trying to get um, his feet under him, you know, get acclimated to a new team, new system, um, learning to play with new players. And these are the same players that he's not, he's trying to learn to play with, but Giannis out, Chris Middleton, you know, PJ Tucker out. I mean, these are, these guys are, you know, Dante's out tonight. I mean, he's still trying to get used to playing with these guys at the same time, they're not playing in games because of injuries or, or resting or, or whatever you call it. So I think where you're going to see Drew Holiday take that next step is going to be in the playoffs. I think you're going to see him be a difference maker in the playoffs. Whereas Bucks fans, we're accustomed to, okay, we get to the playoffs, we're going to cruise through the first round, no problem. Well, then Terry Rozier is going to embarrass Eric Bledsoe. Again, no disrespect to Eric Bledsoe. I think he's a great player and a great person. He got embarrassed in that second round with the, with the Warriors. Drew Holiday's not going to let that happen. Um, at least I don't think he does. I don't think he's going to. I mean, his player efficiency rating, whether you believe in the, the analytics uh, department or not, I mean, he's at a 23.6. Now, to put that in perspective, the average NBA point guard is a 15. So the average point guard is 15, and our point guard here in Milwaukee is 23.6. I think that's... I think that's phenomenal. Um, I, I mean, so much to look forward to. Um, I love, you know, that we officially, you know, some people will, will knock on, uh, on Chris Middleton. I think officially Milwaukee has their big three and they got the big three for the long haul. Um, Jake's uh, drops by in a comment. Um, he says, if they fall short again, it's time to make a change. He's asking, is it time to make a change? Uh, Bud being, Bud probably being gone if they lose in the second round can't be complacent. I don't disagree. And we're going to dive into that um, towards the end of the show. Um, when we talk about Giannis's injury and where this team is going forward. Um, I think he's absolutely right. Um, it is going to be, he is going to be on the hot seat. He is going to be um, somebody that is going to be looked at from the ownership. You know, like what, what else do you need, man? You got, you got, I mean, before not Giannis's knee injury, you could argue he was the MVP this year. He is the MVP. You can make it the argument. He's the MVP every year, but what, what, what more do you need, bud? I mean, you got, you got the best player arguably in the NBA and Giannis, you got arguably the best two-way guard in the NBA in Drew holiday. Say what you want about, uh, say what you want about Chris Middleton if he's your third option and we're going to talk about the options after Giannis later on in the show, we're going to get to that. Don't let me forget. I ran a Twitter poll. I kind of wanted to get the pulse on the city and see where they were at in the fan base. Um, but if your third option is Chris Middleton and he's averaging 20.3 points a game, I mean, that's pretty darn good. I mean, for a third option, I, I would, you know, if you told me that 10 years ago, while I'm watching uh, Jared Bayless run the offense that, Hey, you know, pretty soon you're going to have the best two-way guard in the NBA and, um, your third option is, or, you know, whatever you call your third option. I mean, even if it's Drew or Middleton, you're still not losing a whole lot. Um, is going to be at 20 points a game and an efficient score. I know we had a rough game last night. I get it. I wish everybody would understand that that is not going to happen every night. And if it's going to, some nights you have those. I mean, I could pull up a stat sheet looking back and, and show a Steph Curry game where he went nine of 35. I mean, it happens. And it's going to happen probably again, and it's going to be okay. I promise you. Yeah, uh, uh, Chris Middleton will figure it out. He will get it figured out. Uh, you know he's not playing tonight. If you are just tuning in, thank you for joining. We're just discussing some Bucks talk right here. Follow us on Twitter at Brew City Pod. Jump on the Facebook page. 
at Brew City Lounge. Thank you for taking the time to tune in. It's Friday. Grab a beer. Let's have some fun. No brewer game. Bucks kick off in about two hours or so. Um, so we're just getting started here with the Bucks talk. Um, and yeah, so I think I think uh, I think what the what the Bucks have going on in Milwaukee, there's a lot to look forward to. Um, and then you jump across um, the street, go down the road, down 94, and you, and you, and you get into AmFam Field. And, you know, it's been, it's been a, sh- a stressful uh, week as a Brewer fan. Um, you know, there's been a lot of ups and downs. Um, they haven't necessarily hit and, at all. Uh, <laughs> Keston Hira and Jackie Bradley Jr. have combined, uh, have a combined two hits at like almost 50 at-bats. Um, so it's been, it's been a, uh, it's been a, a struggle offensively to the brewer season. Um, and I agree with, uh, my dad, actually, Kendall, everybody has a bad game once in a while. Can't hold that against them. And he's, he's absolutely right. And, and, you know, back against to the bucks, you know, Chris Middleton comes to play in the playoffs. He's shown that against Boston. He'll be back. Um, Jake drops in. We have drew last two seasons. We make the finals. Bledsoe was that bad in the playoffs again. Back to my point initially, um, and I know I'm jumping ship from Bucks to Brewers, and that's okay. That's what we do at the Brew City Pod. There is no set show. We jump around. We talk whatever we, we we're passionate about. This is what we're passionate about. Jake is absolutely 100% right. It is not Drew Holiday running the ship this year in this playoffs. Drew Holiday is on this team last year or the year prior. Maybe not last year. Last year was a weird year. Nah, credit to the Lakers. You're, you're the champions. Sure. Okay. Uh, stop the season for three, four months and, and got your legs under you. 35 year old LeBron James is not doing that. What he did in the bubble. Um, if we're on a normal NBA season and that's okay. Yeah. I'm not taking a shot at, at Lakers or, or their fans. You know, you, it's your title, put up your banner, whatever you want to call it. COVID championship. I don't care, but drew holidays on this team last year, if not the 2018, 2019 year, he's on our team at, on, uh, on that team, on, on our roster in that season, there's not a chance. There's not a chance that we lose against Toronto. Um, again, not taking anything away from Toronto, um, but uh, you know they uh, they took advantage of the weak spots on that bench. Um, they took advantage of uh, Eric Bledsoe, Kyle Lowry. You know, kind of bullied him from time to time. And I, I can tell you right now, I do not think that happens with um, Drew Holiday. And I'm just a big Drew Holiday fan. And I'll be honest with you, prior to the Bucks acquiring Drew Holiday, I didn't follow him. I didn't look at his game logs and, and see what did Drew Holiday do tonight? Okay. That's somebody I want. I, I didn't, I really didn't where I started falling in love with Drew Holiday is when I started watching him. Um, you just watch a guy that is in so control. He's backing down four, you know, fours and fives and he's, and he's bullying them. And I mean, defensively and offensively, and he's that much of a difference maker to me. And I'm completely biased. It's completely fine. You guys will get to know me. That's fine. I mean, I think he is, I think he is a difference maker. And I think if you have a healthy Giannis um, and a Chris Middleton that shows up and, and maybe having Drew Holiday this year um, and the way he's playing or the way he will play. Um, and I'm joined right now, uh, Mr. Dario Melendez. Sir, can you hear me? Dario, are you there? You got me. Dario Melendez, my friend. Here we go. How's it going? (laughs) Ladies and gentlemen, um, welcome to the show. This is the first, very first episode, Dario, of the Brew City Lounge. Uh, So when we go famous, because you know we're going to go famous. And when I I get on that national stage, I want want you to be the one that, you know, you were the first, uh, the uh, very first guest. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Dario Melendez, Bally Sports, very own um, TV host and reporter um, give him a follow on Twitter at Dario underscore Melendez. Dario, how you doing, man? Good, man. I just want to let you know the biggest reason why I decided to do this podcast tonight was one, you're one of my favorite Twitter follows. <laughs> and two, I really wanted to upset Rhino. Um, <laughs> he is what I call a King Dingleberry. And uh, I needed to make sure he wasn't the first podcast I got to do. Well, hey, from the bottom of my heart, man, I greatly appreciate it. Um, now, Everybody knows Dario as the awesome TV host and reporter. What people may not know, Dario, and you got to explain this to them. You are a Guinness world record holder. Yes, I am. I mean, that's Uh, a big deal. (laughs) 
I mean, you said it, not me. Obviously, <laughs> we all know. Uh, yeah, no, it was cool. Um, I was doing my radio show on 97 through the game. There could be something coming up very soon that there could be a little reunion. We'll see what happens. But that's exciting. I always like kind of thinking outside the box and having fun because that's what you don't really get to see with us on TV. We're very polished. It's very cut and dry. It's very formulaic. So radio gives you the opportunity to be a little bit more yourself, be goofy. And uh, if there's one thing I like, it's uh, swag, trophies, memorabilia, <laughs> stupid plaques. So we had this dude that uh, had set, I don't know, like 150 Guinness World Records on. I'm like, okay, I don't want to do anything serious. What is like a low-hanging fruit world record that you're not going to waste your time on that I can do? And he said, donut stacking. I mean, right now, the Guinness World Record for most donuts stacked blindfolded in a minute was seven. Deal. So I put in the application. We... uh we attempted the record in front of tens of thousands of fans and uh, it got approved like seven months later. It was the most excruciating, agonizing seven <laughs> months of my life. Did you um, guys? It was cool. Actually, you know, I got the plaque. I don't know oh, I got... they sent there it to go. you. See, there we go. See, nobody, a nobody. World record plaque. Not many other people are going to be able to say they had a Guinness World Record holder on their show. So, I mean, guys, Brew hey, City you Lounge. Want, you want me to break some news for you? I haven't Absol- told anybody yet. Absolutely, sir. June 4th, 2021. So the first Friday of every June is National Donut Day. So June 4th, 2021 in Greenfield, Milwaukee, Mequon is going to be Dario Melendez Day. Oh, that is phenomenal because you're also a uh, um, state fair champion as well. I am a cream puff state fair champion. Oh, hold on. Hold on one second. I'll be back. See, we got guys, Bruce City Lounge here. We got got the, the best guests. I mean, Guinness World Record. State Fair, Cream City, uh, eating champion, June 4th, 2021. Oh, Look at there that. There you go. Look at that, ladies and gentlemen. Celebrity That's phenomenal. Cream Puff eating champ. <laughs> champ. Dario, you, you are <laughs> you are the man. I, I, I again, I'm what you call a dork, like a massive <laughs> dork. If you want, I'll take you downstairs and show you all my Legos. <laughs> I was going to ask if you got into any new Legos uh, lately. Uh, I have not. Uh, I did the Empire State Building and Statue of Liberty, which is on one of my office desks over there. But uh, really into the Star Wars stuff, like you know, all of the chicks dig. Chicks oh, absolutely. dig Star Wars. We know that. <laughs> my wife. If I wasn't married, I'd have no chance. <laughs> <laughs> well, we don't have to have to worry about that right now. So I'm gonna get right into it. Um, for those of you that uh, don't know, and you all should, Dario Melendez hosts the uh, Brewers and the Bucks pre and post game show um, on. What is now Bally Sports used to be formerly known as Fox Sports. Um, Dario, real quick, I know it's only a week into the season, and I know you know Milwaukee fans are so passionate. What are your thoughts on the early season of the Brewers? I, uh, offensively, it's been a struggle, but pitching's been something that I don't know if we really expected. I know it was a question mark going into the season, um, but go, what, what are your like early thoughts um, on the season so far? That everybody just needs to calm down. This is what I always say, and it's not meant to be an insult. Like, I'm not a fan of any sport anymore. This business kind of does it to you. And it's not that I don't root for the Brewers. And growing up, I was a big Marlins fan. But fan is like, fan stands for fanatic. It means you're fanatical about the outcome. You, you live and die. You, you breathe by it, which is awesome, which is why I decided to come back to Milwaukee. But in baseball, in 162 games, you just have to be mm-hmm. patient, especially at the beginning of the season. We're seven games in. And everybody's jumping ship already. Uh, I actually expected the pitching staff to be exactly what they are. Okay. Um, I was hoping, and we've only seen one outing from Hauser. We'll get to see him again, I'm guessing, tomorrow Mm -hmm. uh, in St. Louis, and I'll be doing that game. Um, Corbin Burns, exactly what I thought he'd be. Brandon Woodruff, what I thought he'd be. That Freddie Peralta slider changeup, uh, I saw a little bit of it in spring training. Okay. If he could throw that thing consistently, which he did in his first outing. Right. But whoever has taught him that, and I'm guessing it was Hook that that was really working with him on that a lot. Yep. um, That could be the key to the rest of this rotation. Because, like, Brett Anderson is going to give you what he gives you. He's going to be an off-speed guy that after you see – power arm after power arm after power arm he's gonna mess mess with some teams and that's what you want i mean he's consistent uh he really in my opinion outside of obviously the last game where you have the home runs but he falls into a lot of bad luck uh the defense is shored up a lot with colton wong now at second mm-hmm. and Luis Urias at 
at short and you got Travis Shaw now and you kind of hide Keston here a little bit. Uh, Anderson's going to be fine, but this pitching staff is going to be the bread and butter of the National League Central. Might be one of the better pitching staffs in all of baseball. Hitting will take hitting takes time. Aramis Ramirez is the guy I always like to point to because he is one of the better third basemen we've seen in a long time come through Milwaukee. Notorious for being one of the worst hitters the first two months of the season. And then he'd always pick it up. I mean, these guys are professional hitters. I understand people are worried about Keston Hira. Just give him more than a week. Give him a, a, a month, maybe. I mean, this isn't mm-hmm. a race anymore. Last year was a little weird. Look at Omar Narvaez. Everybody right. wanted to write Omar Narvaez off last year because of a weird 2 one season. And he's hotter than hot. So yeah. the hitting will come. All you have to do is be within a game or two, even three of first place at the All-Star break, and you'll get hitting because you're going to make a trade. This team, in my opinion, will probably be first place by the All-Star break because I think they're that good. The pitching's that good. The bullpen will be great. All you have to do is be within three games of first place come the All-Star break. Stearns, Arnold will make moves, yep. and the team will be just fine. And they've shown that. And I and I echo exactly what you're saying. I, um, it is a long season. And, and you know, you see a lot of, uh, you know, a lot of chatter on Twitter with pulling Woodruff out, um, pulling Burns out. And, and I think people are quick to forget, like, okay, I know we're, last year we were hung up on every game mattered. You know, you're 60 games in, you know, every win and loss really did matter. I mean, it kind of, you know, but now you're, this is not a sprint. This is a marathon. I mean, you're, you're yeah. in for the, you're in for the long haul. And when you pull Woody out, I mean, I know he went no hit bait into the six and then, you know, he, the Brewers eventually won that game. But um, I mean, you got to understand it. This is, this is a marathon. I mean, these guys are not last year. They didn't pitch near enough amount of innings as they should have. This year is almost three times longer let Craig Council do what he does. I mean, I, in my opinion, and again, I'm biased. I no no fear in admitting that. I think he's the best manager in the National League, and 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 goes you know under the radar a whole lot um, because of where he lives and and, and manages. But um, I'll tell you what, though, I think the one that surprised me so far was Freddie Peralta. I I yeah. think he he has been something that I was not expecting this early in the season. Would you agree with that? Oh, uh, yeah. Look, again, it, it goes both ways. I mean, you want to slow the roll, pump the brakes a little bit when guys are losing. You also want to slow the roll, pump the brakes a little bit with guys that don't really have a track record yet. Like we saw Corbin Burns last year. We saw him in 2018. We saw Woodruff last year. We saw him in 2018. So we kind of know what we're getting with those guys. Peralta, to this point in his career, hasn't been consistent. He shows flashes of being the guy that David Stern thought he was getting when he acquired him a few mm-hmm. years ago. Um so I don't want to get overly excited, but man, that, that slider curveball, the changeup oh, he's working on, it man. looks really good. His velocity is up like three ticks mm-hmm. as well. Like you remember two years ago, he was low to low to maybe high eighties. And Augie used to always explain it. Like there's two types of fastballs, fastballs that just come in straight and then fastballs that have a little explosion at the end. And okay. he was saying that Peralta's fastball has a little giddy up at the end that catches guys. And that's why he was so successful with a very mediocre fastball. But now his fastball is high. His changeup, changeup slash curveball, whatever he, that pitch he throws <laughs> is, it, which is crazy. Yeah, it's eighty miles an hour. So you have a fifteen to sixteen mile an hour drop off. Hitters don't stand a chance. Uh, but you have to be able to throw it for strikes. His first outing, threw yeah. it for strikes. Yep. So we'll see what happens. And look, I mean, I, I know you mentioned the Woodruff stuff. It's twenty twenty one, man. Like pitchers outside of the top echelon don't throw seven, eight, nine innings anymore. Like right. this is a bullpen game. What he said it himself. I mean, he was a little gassed. He, he'd been doing ups too much. And I hadn't, have you ever heard of ups? I, I heard, I heard that, uh, that post game comment and I, and I did not, I did not know what he was yeah. talking about. I, I had never heard that before. Yeah. And this is why it's great that we added Tim Dillard and Vinny Rutino uh, and, and Siggy to the, the rotation. They kind of help with the vernacular ups it's just getting up and down every inning like yeah. he had gone to the bench to get up after between bats i had never heard that before so i asked him about it and and <laughs> what he said it afterwards he's like look i mean i was doing ups a lot like he was, he was cooling down and he was getting up and he's cooling down and he's getting up and it's only his second start of the year so why test it mm-hmm. i mean you have a bullpen that is reliable that obviously has floundered a couple games this year but again it's only been seven games so it'll be fine I, I couldn't agree more. I think that, you know, when, when, when Woody's going in, well, first off, when he was going into um, the going into the six, I mean, his pitch count was super low and I know everybody was up in arms about um, pulling him out, but I mean, without, I call him the main three and, and they may fluctuate throughout the year, but 
uh, Woodruff, Burns, and Peralta. I mean, if you can lock those three in as your top three, this offense will turn around and and look out NL Central, maybe the NL. I mean, the NL seems kind of open um, as far as that one team that kind of sticks out, obviously the Dodgers. Um, but San yeah. Diego's dealing already with um, Tatis Jr. out. Um, I think it's an oblique injury. So, I mean, outside of the the Dodgers and maybe, you know, the Padres, the Brewers' chances in the NL, I think, are, are just as good as any. Especially with his pitching staff. And, yeah. and again, we've seen this now five years with Council. He's led the team to three straight postseason berths. He's going to play the numbers. I understand people don't like that. Numbers lie. Numbers don't lie. The gut can mislead. I remember covering the Mets um, in that 2015 run when I was working in New York. And it was, uh, was a game three. It must have been game three back at City Field. Matt Harvey's throwing a freaking gem. Eight innings, just shutting down the Royals. Terry Collins gets Jerry's Familia up in the pen, and he should have gone to Jerry's Familia. But Matt Harvey, who was very confident at the time, was like, you know what, Terry? I'm going back out there. You're not sitting me. I'm going out there. I'm going to win this game. You got to let me do it. And Terry went with his gut. And what happened was, maybe it was game four. And what happened was, I think it was a Hosmer ball off a of center field, wall, uh, Kane doubles, and then they had to pull him, and the Royals go on to win that game. Mm-hmm. The numbers don't lie. The gut will lie every now and then. The numbers say third time through, ERAs go up, batting averages go up, get a guy out. And mm-hmm. it's game two, and he's already fatigued. It's just the way, and I understand this has always been a talking point with Brewers fans, and I get it, especially older Brewers fans, older baseball, they don't like seeing these pitchers that are being babied. Well, pitching is different nowadays. It's <laughs> it's empty the tank as, as, as much as you can. Pitch for as long as you can, as hard as you can. We'll get you out. We'll put the bullpen in. And that's what Craig Council's done. That's what David Stearns has really lived by, and it's been successful. So it just – it's – it's frustrating when you see it because you would think people would adapt by now. But yeah. And, it's hard. And I call it the dark web, uh, Twitter and Facebook. It's absolutely, it's the dark web. It's the dark world. It's just toxic. So I try to avoid it. <laughs> yeah, you think, I got, <laughs> you're going to tell me, man. I, I already know. know. <laughs> I, I already, I already know, you know, now <laughs> I know, I know we just talked about being in a long season and I totally agree. Um, the one thing I, that keeps being brought up, uh, whether it's local radio, not so much national, but obviously in the dark web, any concern going forward with Keston Hira, in your opinion? Now, the position changed. Is that something that he's overthinking and it's taking away from – I mean, he's one for 23 to start the season. You're talking about a guy that, you know, prior to coming up to the big leagues, in his first few months in the big leagues, you're talking about, bat, you know, possible batting, um, you know, title in the near future for him. Is this something that, you know, we're only seven games in, not a big deal, but hey, maybe we think about it. Is he pressing too hard? I mean, position change. What are your kind of thoughts on Keston Hira? If you look at Hira's career, every level he's gone up, he has struggled mightily at first, okay, especially with strikeouts. Single A to double A, double A to triple A. We didn't see it in 2019 when he came up, which I think is kind of setting this, this bar right now. He has always struggled adapting at first. Now, Sometimes the adapting takes a week. Sometimes it takes two months. Um, pitchers have found that he will chase anything high and out of the zone. So that's going to be something he's going to have to deal with. And look, he's making a position change. You have to realize this was a guy who played outfield in college, tore his UCL, mm-hmm. had to learn how to play second base, had never played second base. So now he is 10,000 ground balls behind everybody at the major league level. But because his bat's so good, he's being thrown in. And now you're telling him to play another position that is foreign to him. So at this point, it might be a little bit of pressing, but at some point he's going to have to learn that pitchers have adapted to him and there's enough film on him now. Would think about this. There were a lot of people speculating that after 2019, the Brewers should have probably tried to trade Corbin Burns because he could be a project for somebody else. Imagine if that would have happened because 2019, <laughs> 2019 Corbin Burns was so bad. They took him out of baseball. Think about that. I remember like that. They, demo- yep. they demoted him. And then they're like, you know what? You are done for the season. We're going to send you down to our scientific lab in Maryvale, figure out what the hell is wrong. And then we'll <laughs> see what happens in 2020. Keston here is kind of in the same boat. He doesn't have the same track record as a Christian Yelich or Omar Narvaez where there's a little bit of, um, 
more on the back of the playing card that you're expecting them to kind of break out of it. But it would, I mean, shock me if at some point here doesn't get back to the guy that we know he is because at every level he's shown, yeah, he struggled at first, but he's made the adjustments and he's always succeeded. I I don't disagree with that. I'm a huge hero fan. I remember when they called him up, um, I was, I, I'm super excited for him. And I, and I, I agree with you. I think as the season goes on again, it's a long season um, Brewers fans. We got to kind of just be realistic about it. It's only April 9th. So um, one more. Look, he is struggling. He is struggling. Yeah. I mean, there, there can be some concern there. I, I could see counts putting him on the bench for a day or two to kind of get his head straight. But again, as you just said, I mean, it's seven games in. The dude has a proven track record that at every level he has succeeded when given the ample opportunity. Now he's facing the first bit of adversity and he's always succeeded. So I don't see why he wouldn't now. And I, and I completely agree. I have one more Brewer question before I ask you about the Bucks, and, and I might be reaching here, Dario. And if I am reach through the camera and slap me, but I got to ask <laughs> 2019 September. I can't remember the exact date. Yelich is on his way for a back-to-back MVP foul ball goes off his kneecap. In my opinion, and I don't know the analytics of this, you know, particular question or statement I'm going to make to you. Um, something changed with him. I mean, obviously last year he struggled. I give him the benefit of the doubt. It was a you know weird year. Is is there is there is there something different with him? Do you think from 2018 2019 to what we see now? I mean, you're you're seeing a guy that you know um, struggles, you know, at times, um, and and a guy that strikes out a lot more than, than what I'm accustomed to. Again, I don't have the numbers in front of me, so I'd be lying to you if I told you anything. Um, do you think there's any concern? Is he thinking about that injury? I know he's, he called it a freak accident and and it's something that, you know, he struggled with mentally. Um, is there anything, any worry there at all? Do you think? I'm trying to figure out a way I can come through and slap you, but I can't, (laughs) I can't do that right now. Um, (laughs) I'm looking, I just pulled up his stats real quick. Obviously he goes 0 for 3 against Seattle or St. Louis, I should say. He has a three hit day against Chicago, one hit with a run against Chicago, 0 for 1 hit, 2 hit, 0 for, so I mean, he's batting around 300 right now. I mean, his home runs are down though. His home runs are, are way, yeah, I know here, last year's I, weird. This, yeah. yeah, I mean, that's what I would tell anybody outside of five players. 2020 was a poop show. Uh, I wouldn't invest any thought into what happened in 2020 with anybody. I mean, yep. Bryce Harper was terrible. Um, I mean, pretty much outside of Mookie Betts, Freddie Freeman, and Jose Abreu, everybody in Major League Baseball stunk. It just it, it is what it is because you only have 22 months, which in a normal season you'd be through May and you still have a chance to kind of get it going. I mentioned Aramis Ramirez earlier yeah. and two months for him, he would have looked like the worst third baseman of all time. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, I, it looks good, man. Like I understand the strikeouts have been up a little bit, but from what I've seen, the games I've covered, I mean, he looks like he's seen the ball pretty well. He's not falling off as much. It just looks like early season woes for most hitters. I mean, most hitters struggle in the beginning of the year. That's why you see so many um, strikeout totals and pitchers just dominating, which toward the end of the year, you're not going to see that. You're going to see a lot of long balls. But I I think Yelich will be just fine. Look, 2020, I put zero stock into anything that happened in 2020. I mean, I think the Brewers made the postseason. Um, I think it worked. Look, Clayton Kershaw, there's a reason why he struggles every year in the postseason. I mean, he's an older pitcher right now, and he usually has uh, seven months of pitching on his arm. He only had two months, and he was able to dominate month three, which was a playoff run. Mm-hmm. Um, so 2020, it's hard to really put any stock into because it's just a, it's a weird, weird year. But I think Yelich looks good right now. I just think the entire team is kind of <sighs> too tight because yeah. they they kind of feel the pressure. They, they can hear the fans. They understand what's going on. They see the team they have because this team's built for a run. Mm-hmm. I mean, they look good. I mean, outside of maybe shortstop right now, which is still a little bit of a concern. I mean, the outfield might be the best in all of baseball. Uh, you have a great second baseman. I think Travis Shaw is showing that he can still hit the ball. The pitching staff's phenomenal. Like, this team is built to do something really special. And all you have to do is get two to three games under your belt where you're just hitting the ball really well and everything will be fine. And they yeah. just haven't done that yet because they only have seven games so far. Yeah, and it's it's super early, and I and I do appreciate you diving into to the Brewers talk. I do want to do 
a little bit of a transition here and, and, and I know you are limited on time and, 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 and that's fine. I wanted to get your thoughts real quick on the Drew Holiday extension. Uh, there's a lot of people that are upset. You, you say a 30 year old, um, you're going to be paying a 34 year old, you know, $30 million, whatever it is. Um, I just, for the first 15 minutes of the show went on a love fest with Drew Holiday because I, I love him. I think what he brings to the court um, offensively and defensively um, it, it, it's you know, probably the best two-way guard in the NBA in my opinion. Um, and you can maybe make the case for the best two-way player, period, minus maybe Giannis and a couple others. But what, are, what were your thoughts when that news broke last Sunday on Easter, Drew Holiday, four years, 135, chance to get up to 160? I was ecstatic. Like, look, I've gotten to know Drew personally, and he's a great dude. Like, the what he and his wife, Lauren, do mm-hmm. for the community, number one, is worth everything. And it's hilarious because his wife is a better athlete than he is. <laughs> if if people true. don't know, Lauren <laughs> yeah. Holiday is a two-time Olympic gold medalist, a World yep. Cup champion, uh, MVP in her soccer league. Like, she's a baller. So he's the mm-hmm. scrub in that family. Uh, but you see what he does on the court. Like, when Giannis isn't there, which we saw the last three games, and look, I mean, the Dallas game, they had the entire game until the final six uh-huh. minutes. The Warriors game, they had the entire game until the final four minutes. It looked like people got gassed a little bit. But, man, like defensively, you ask Kevin Durant, you ask Damian Damian Lillard, you ask Russell Westbrook, they all say the toughest guy that they have to face Mm -hmm. is Drew Holiday. That says a lot. Like you're not getting that from anybody else. You're you're just not. And then offensively, what he can do just getting his own shot where he just bullies guys down low, um, it, it was a great signing. And it's a great pairing because he's selfless. Like, he doesn't need to be the superstar. He can allow Giannis to be. And I think what the past three games have shown us is that Giannis is the MVP. Oh, by far, yeah. Because Mm -hmm. guys aren't used to not getting the shots that they want. Bobby Portis has been phenomenal. I know Mm -hmm. we're supposed to be talking about Drew Holiday. Oh, I agree with you about Bobby. I love Bobby. Yeah. To answer your question, though, Drew Holiday is worth every penny. What he does, he's a, a massive, massive difference maker. Probably one of the most underrated signings this offseason for any team is Bobby Portis. Absolutely. I mean, Bobby Portis, what he brings off the bench is phenomenal. That's mm-hmm. why when he's in the starting lineup, the team's a little worse because starting lineup, his numbers uh, percentage-wise are better. Mm-hmm. He, he, he's doing a really good job, but that means you lose the pop off the bench. So when Giannis takes a break, who do you bring in? All right. I mean, you bring in Bobby Portis. So you're when Portis Bobby. takes a break, who are you bring in? Like, exactly. You, you're going to bring in – the nasty. No one. Yeah, the nasty. <laughs> Man, I, 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 hey, that. last night. Last night was Look, fun though. I was loving. I, I the was is, is turning into a really valuable basketball. I player. agree. I really. Do. I will. I mean, look, I covered him when he got drafted by the Knicks, and he was bad. I mean, all he did was playing Westchester. His first season or two with the Bucks. I mean, when I look, we get to watch parts of shoot around that no one else does, and uh, it was it was rough watching him watch him shoot around like he. He just didn't really have a lot of touch around the rim. He didn't have a lot of touch with the basketball. I will say, though, whatever he did this offseason, his touch looks a lot better, and he's just annoying. Like, he's that guy that is yep. so annoying, it gets under your skin, and he's going to laugh and smile about it the entire time. Look, we saw it in the third quarter of the Mavericks game. The, the Mavs were up a little bit. The Nassus kind of starts sparking that second unit. And it just, it got under Doncic's skin. It got under oh, Zingas' skin. Like it was, there's value there. I don't know how much value and how much playing time we'll see in the playoffs, mm-hmm. but for the regular season, I mean, it's, it's fun. He's turning into uh, a really solid NBA player. I didn't have this written down for a question or a topic I wanted to go over with you, but something in me watching him, and now I'm not the best NBA analyst or, or fan, you know, I don't know the most, but since PJ Tucker got to Milwaukee, Thanasis' defense looks a little bit more um, controlled. He looks like his body is a little bit more under control. I mean, is there any – do you see P.J. Tucker working with him pregame, maybe talk about it? I mean, it just seems like P.J. Tucker comes to Milwaukee via trade, and it seems like Thanasis is is always full of energy, high high motor. But it seems like now he's a little bit more – under control like he's got a little bit more he's got somebody you know walking through certain things with him and I I don't know maybe if PJ Tucker you know um, Drew Holiday is also a great defender um, but maybe PJ Tucker's working with him I don't know Uh, look I haven't personally seen it wouldn't surprise me if PJ's given him a couple pointers I mean he's a pretty selfless guy but it to me it's all about confidence yeah like Thanasis has seen he can have success at this level and he is understanding what his role is like his roles not to get buckets his roles to be an agitator but to be a controlled agitator, you know, not a guy that's going to start fights like 
Ennis Cantor or anything, like a guy that's going to go out there, play really good defense, try not to get a foul, but if you do get a foul, it's okay. But he's also shown that, I mean, you let him go one-on-one with someone, every now and then he'll just leap out of the building because of his right. freak athleticism. Mm-hmm. What was it? The other day, uh, I think it was against the Knicks, when he went four for five from downtown. Oh, yeah. He was four like, for four for a while. Yeah. Where the hell did that come yeah, from? Yeah, that was incredible. So, I just, to me, look, basketball, sports, life, it's all about confidence. That's why I would never do a show with Rhino. Like, the dude has no confidence ever. <laughs> I, I had to get a poke in. He's listening. Uh, no, no. He's tuning in. <laughs> good, good. I hope he listens. You need confidence, bro. Uh, no, life, sports, it's all about confidence. And you could see his growing this year. And that's why Coach Bud's playing. Well, Coach Bud isn't going to play guys that don't deserve it. Like, he's not just going to give minutes away to give minutes away. Like, you have to earn it. And Thanasis, I mean, to his credit, has earned every single minute of the season. So I got to ask, um, you know, it, it, it might be nothing. Um, last, I believe it's last four games now. Um, I'll stop you right there. I think it's nothing. Okay. So thank you. Before the Portland Trailblazers game, we're mm-hmm. about to blow up our entire show. So, and I actually love that because it kind of gets me my adrenaline going. Right. So we had an entire show signed lined up for Bucks Live. And we're like, hey guys, Giannis just left the court limping really bad. And they showed us the video and oh, he's God. just doing so, he's just going through <laughs> some like crazy shoot arounds and like he collapses. Then he gets back up, he tries to test it out, he shoots again, and his left knee just gives out. So he had to kind of be helped off the court to oh, go boy. to the locker room. So we're about to like go live with this. Hey, breaking news, Giannis <laughs> might not play, might have injured himself. And all of a sudden someone gets in my ear, hey, we're going back to the normal show. We don't know if he's going to get scratched. We don't know anything. He goes on to score 47 points. I do so remember that. At this, yep. Yeah. I mean, so at this point, the key for the Bucks because they've already had the top seed the last two years and it hasn't worked out. The key for the Bucks is not just be healthy, but to be 100% healthy. And that includes Giannis. Could Giannis play tonight? Could he have played last night or the night before? I would say probably. I mean, he probably could have dressed for either of those games. But Coach Bud wants his superstar at 100%. And he wants to see what these guys can do without them. Because we also saw last year in the Heat series, Giannis goes down. The Bucs were able to win a game without Giannis half the time. They weren't able to do a game without him the entire time. So Coach Bud's not dumb. Like the Bucs struggled a little bit in the beginning of the season because he's throwing little wrinkles out there. Like this game, Mm -hmm. we're going to switch everything. Next game, we're playing drop defense. The next game, we're going to throw some zone in. We're going to play this guy in this position. We're going to play him here. Like Coach Bud's tinkering a little bit to give his guys different looks for the playoffs. It doesn't surprise me if that's his game plan right now where Giannis could have played. But you know what? I want to see what these guys will do for three games. And now it's going to be four because he's not playing against uh, the Hornets then at Pfizer form. I want to see what these guys will do without Giannis for four games. Speaking because of this yep. could happen. Right. Well, it's and it's a very real possibility, especially the way Giannis plays and, and the physicality that he brings night in and night out. Um, speaking of not playing, um, are you not working the Bucks game tonight? No, I'm off tonight. So okay. tomorrow starts 17 straight days. <laughs> uh, this is yeah. I mean, this look, this year is going to be great. <laughs> yeah, um, it's exciting. We're, and- we're yeah, we're making we're, <laughs> we're making up for some lost cash from last year, but uh, with bucks and brewers at the same time for like mm-hmm. two maybe four months depending how uh far the bucks go it is going to be busy for myself craig uh steve sophia zora but uh yeah so i have tonight off and i think i got 17 in a row i got brewers saturday then bucks and brewers and brewers and bucks so it, it's gonna be back and forth and it's fun though man i'll take it all day every day so what you're saying is in 18 days or 19 days you're going to come back on the podcast and talk some more bucks and brewers Oh, for sure. As long as Rhino's not on the podcast, he's jumping. I mean, he's just... jumping. In, he's jumping in some of the comments. He's a little upset right now with you, so you might you might get a DM later. Good, good. <laughs> he 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 he's a dingleberry. That, and that's uh, going back to your comments about you know the Bucks and the Brewers. And that's this is the first episode. Um, we're on a new network, and and that's why I'm thrilled with this podcast because I'm a diehard Bucks and a diehard Brewers fan. And when I brought the idea, um, I said this is perfect. Bucks and Brewers run together. I mean, the Bucks are getting into their playoff run. The Brewers are in the midst of their, you know, uh, their season. And then, you know, as the, the baseball season goes, the basketball season picks right back up. So it's an exciting time uh, to be a to be a Bucks and a Brewers fan. Um, big things to look forward to. Uh, hopefully Chris Middleton picks up 
um, his uh, performances. Um, I know uh, there's a lot of haters on Chris Middleton right now, um, but I know you got to run. I really appreciate the time. Anytime, man. And, uh, again, for those that are tuning in, this is uh, Dario Melendez, um, Valley Sports um, TV um, and reporter, uh, pregame and postgame. You can follow him on Twitter at Dario underscore Melendez. Sir, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I greatly appreciate it. Hopefully I'll see you on TV, uh, getting ready for the Eastern conference finals and, and hopefully the finals, that'd be, that'd be a ton of fun, especially for the city. It'd be great, man. I'll take it. I mean, I want to, I want a championship parade down water. That's <laughs> exactly. what I want. Exactly. I, I had a, I made an intro for the show and, and I, a little bit of a teaser. I said, what is it going to take to get a parade in downtown Milwaukee? I mean, it's something's got to give. Um, so hopefully this is the year again. Thank you, sir. I look forward to, uh, having you come on again and, and I'll be watching for you on Valley sports and, and hopefully 97, three, the game, I'm not going to break any news, but hopefully, hopefully, yeah. I hear, hopefully I hear you we'll, again. We'll, we'll see what happens, but just don't forget. We're going to be celebrating June 4th. Dario Absolutely. Melendez Day. Do not forget those tuning in June 4th, Dario Melendez day, Milwaukee, Greenfield, fill me in on the rest. Uh, Mech one. And then state of Wisconsin, I think too, they, they, they okay. do a proclamation. So uh, the only person who's not allowed to celebrate is, Rhino. Rhino. He's the worst. He's the worst. <laughs> Sir, I, I appreciate you. Hey, you have a great night. Uh, enjoy your night off with your family. Um, look forward to, to seeing you in a couple weeks. Thank you. All right, Brandon. Thanks, man. Right, have a good one. And Dario drops off, but that does not mean we are done, ladies and gentlemen. I have so much more I want to dive into. Um, holy cow. That was so much fun talking to Dario Melendez. And if you don't get a chance, please follow him on Twitter. He is hilarious and he's very interactive too. Um, so yeah, a lot of stuff that Dario said kind of sticks out. Um, and a lot of stuff kind of helps me put me at ease. Cause I, I'm a Milwaukee fan. You know, we're used to the disappointment. We're used to getting to the finals and uh, Eastern conference finals and, and going up to nothing and then losing. And we're used to the Brewers getting all the way to game seven and dropping off. And uh, so it, you know, it is a long year. It is a long brewer season. Um, so I think we do got to give these guys some time, give Kesson Hira um, some time. I know I brought up to Dario, uh, Christian Yelich, um, his kind of struggles, you know, leading back from his, you know, freak knee injury. Um, you know, is that something to be concerned about? I mean, is it something that's in his head? I mean, I don't know. I, I would think that, you know, he, you know, is the Christian Yelich of the, of the old and, and the guy that we traded for, um, in the, in the winter of, uh, 2017, 2018. Um, so I hope that, um, they get turned around. I think the pitching will be, um, sustained it. My, I mean, you look at these numbers real quick. I mean, just sit back and listen to these numbers. I mean, you got Corbin Burns, two games, 12.1 innings pitched two hits. He's allowed two hits in 12 innings, one run. I believe it was a solo home run against the twins and his only run. He's got a 0.73 ERA. Again, it's only two games. Pump the brakes. I get it. I know. Freddie Peralta started two games. He's 1-0. Seven innings pitched. He has not allowed a run. 0.0 ERA. Only three hits. 14 strikeouts. Woodruff, two games. It took a no-hit bid into the, uh, the sixth inning, I believe, against Chicago. 11 innings pitched. He's only allowed seven hits, three earned runs, 13 strikeouts. If this starting rotation is going to be like this, then even if they take a little bit of a step backwards, if this starting rotation retains and keeps this st- uh, level of play, his offense is going to turn around. My, my friends down in Chicago, down there in St. Louis, watch out. Because once Yelich gets it turned around, once Hira starts uh, getting his confidence, I mean, this team is, uh, is set up for success. And like Dario said, they're set, they're, uh, set up for a, a postseason run. I mean, they're defensively, you're talking about multiple gold glove winners, Yelich, uh, Colton Wan. Jackie Bradley Jr., Lorenzo Kane. I mean, they're set up for, for a fun run. And I think that eventually this offense will put it together. Um, uh, Adam drops by in a comment and he says, once the weather heats up, the bats around the league will start to heat up as well. And I couldn't agree more. Um, it is early. Um, remember, these guys had a, had a weird year um, last year and, and they're, they're adjusting to, to fans in the stands. Um, and if you're in Milwaukee, speaking of fans in the stands, if you're in Milwaukee, do not forget, um, April 12th, Miller Park opens, I'm sorry, AmFam Field opens up um, tailgating. So that's super exciting. Um, Adam says the Brewers were his pick to win the NL Central. Adam, you and I 
can be friends officially outside of Twitter. I agree with you, my friend. Um, I think that they are going to win the NL Central as well. Um, let's just hope that um, Craig Council makes the right calls. Um, speaking of calls, um, I was looking at my Spectrum bill and uh, just two days ago and thought how ridiculously high that it was. So I reached out to One Call Technology to see if they could help me out. Adam and the, and the guys over there are awesome. They took my bill, ran some analytics on it, and saved me roughly 20% and re- up, actually able to upgrade my internet speed as well. Um, so if you do go over there, head on over there, you can either jump on their website, uh, www.onecalltech.com, or give them a call at 888-585-8850 and tell them Brandon from the Bruce City Lounge sent you. So making a last transition into the show, um, we're going to talk a little bit more about the Milwaukee Bucks before we wrap up the first official show. Um, and I kind of want your thoughts. What, what do you guys think? Um, I ran a Twitter poll. Again, find me, uh, find the page, um, the podcast page on Twitter at Bruce City Pod. I ran a Twitter poll because it, it's something that I've gone, especially after last night. Chris Milton goes for 627 and you kind of wonder to yourself, Drew Holiday has a bad day. I think they were both minus 24 in the plus or minus um, category, however you feel about that. But I ran a poll and I want kind of your thoughts. Now drop a comment on YouTube right now, because I know you're listening. I know you want to talk about it. Drop a comment on YouTube. Um, jump on Twitter. Again, Twitter at Bruce City Pod or Facebook, Bruce City Lounge. Obviously, Giannis is your number one option. That's never going to change. As Giannis goes, the Bucks go. We all know that. Doesn't mean Drew Holiday and Chris Middleton have to be the MVP. Doesn't mean that they have to be comparable to Giannis. They're just not. There's not many more Giannis's in the NBA. Besides Giannis being your number one option, who is number two in your opinion? Because it's a great question. I mean, and you could go back and forth on it uh, multiple times. Um, who is it in your opinion? I, I mean, it come the playoffs, we know, we know Giannis is going to see the wall. He's going to see it in Philly. If they ever get there, play them. He's going to see it in Brooklyn. Um, you know, Blake Griffin and, and DeAndre Jordan and obviously Kevin Durant. And you're going to see it in Philly with Joel Embiid. Somebody else besides Giannis has to step up. Um, he has to. Number two option. Would it, in your opinion, those that are listening, Who, in your opinion, is that number two? Do they need a number two? Does it matter? Could it be both? In my opinion, the number two is probably Chris Middleton, based off of what you're paying him and his productivity in the playoffs already. Not taking anything away from Drew Holiday. You guys know how I feel about Drew Holiday. I think he's probably, you know, like I said, best two-way point guard, uh, maybe player in the NBA. So again, I want your guys' opinion. Who in the Bucks? Giannis is not always going to be yeah, on his game. There's going to be times where he, he, you know, he has an off night. He's going to get in foul trouble. We know how the NBA uh, referees and how the NBA system works. They hate Giannis. They hate that he stayed in Milwaukee. We don't care. We love him, and we're going to take care of him. But in your opinion, who is the number two? Now, I've got a couple comments here I want to read off. Um, Jake says, Drew, uh, brings more overall. Uh, performance that mid does. Um, and again, I don't disagree with that. I lean towards Middleton um, just because of the scoring. I think that Middleton, when he's right, you know, take away um, last night's game, you know, everybody's going to struggle. Um, I think that he's able to create, you know, he's not the, he's not the best dribbler. And those that watch the Bucks <laughs> know this uh, is passing suspect at times, but when it comes to pure scoring, mid-range, three-point, um, I, I think he's overall the more of a number two. But then again, I mean, do you really need a number two? Can it be both? And it, I ran a poll on Twitter. Um, I ran a poll on Twitter. Who is the number two option in team after Giannis? 45%, um, which is you know, obviously one, was it doesn't matter. It could be both. And I agree with that. You're going to have nights where Drew has a better matchup to score offensively, and you're going to have a, a night where – Chris Middleton uh, and his 6'8", six, 6'9", six, frame is going to be in a better uh, position offensively and defensively to score. And I think that it could be both of them. Um, we all know 
that this team's success lies directly on Giannis. Dario said, and again, Dario's plugged into that team. He works for them um, all the time. He, he see, again, you heard him. He's there at the shoot around. Um, he said, it's not something to be worried about. I want to take his word for it. I think that Dario knows what he's talking about. Um, again, he works there. He's with them. Um, I think that um, he has, he has more knowledge on it, on a situation than I do. I just never found Giannis a type of guy to miss four straight games, six out of 11, um, pulling up and, and shoot arounds and, and needs help walking off the court. To me, that, is a little bit more than nothing, I think. And that's my opinion. And I, I don't know any more than anybody, but that's just my take on it. Giannis has never been um, the type of guy to miss multiple games. Um, and I know that they were on a uh, tumultuous road, uh, road schedule, road trip. It was just brutal. They went from like all of California, shot up to Oregon and shot up to Texas. And now they're back home and, um, I was talking about it on the pre-show. If you didn't tune in um, to Twitter or, or, or follow uh, what's going on with the Bucks, pretty much the whole starting lineup is out. So we're going to have like another New York Knicks type game, which I love the Nassus, man. And I, <laughs> I know not everybody, uh, I know not everybody is on, on the same page with him, but it is fun to watch him and uh, frustrate uh, Luca last night. And, um, but getting back to it, I think that, um, it's a question that, you know, it's deservingly needs to be asked, you know, who is the number two you're paying Chris Middleton max money and you're paying, uh, drew holiday, um, a ton of money as well. So I think that it's something that, you know, can be asked, uh, the bucks right now sit 32 and 19, um, or three and a half games back, um, from the number one seed. And, you know, the only thing that concerns me with the seeding, and I agree with Dario, they were the number one seed the last two years and, and um, shouldn't really, you know, matter where they are as long as, you know, they're set up for postseason success, being healthy. Um, I think it kind of matters a little bit. I mean, you, you look at Drew Holiday and he's new. Right? He hasn't been on this team the last two seasons, last two playoff runs. Um, he needs time to play with these guys. He needs time to figure out the tendencies that Giannis has. Um and for the love of God, I pray that Bud lets Drew Holiday run the offense. I know I'm getting off topic here, but it, this just triggered my brain to remember. I am absolutely sick and tired of Dante or Chris Middleton, sometimes even Giannis, bringing the ball up on the court. You are paying Drew Holiday $135 million. Run the offense through him. Let him facilitate. Let him set up the offense. That's what he's great at. That's what you brought him here for. I do not want to see, no offense to Dante or Chris Middleton. I do not want to see that anymore. I'm tired of it. And I'm not the best and most knowledgeable NBA fan. I'm, a, I'm, I'm not. But when I'm watching a game, I can tell you who I'd rather have the ball up. And I think you guys can too. I think it has to be Drew Holiday. I don't understand why it's not ran through him. And maybe, maybe there's something going on behind the scenes. Um, maybe Drew doesn't want to. I don't know. I'm not speculating. I'm not creating a conspiracy here. I just, I'm very curious as to why the box offense is not run through Drew Holiday. It, it's, it's, it's just, it picks at my brain and it, and, it, and it makes me angry when I'm sitting at home watching the box struggle offensively to get in their set. And their half their half court offense is just stagnant, and you see guys just standing around looking at one another uh, because Dante's got the ball, or Chris Middleton has the ball in the corner, and he has nowhere to go with it. And Brooke Lopez is in La La Land in uh, behind the three point line. What what is that? Uh, it's an open question. Like what 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 are, what are we doing here? You got six foot eleven, Giannis, seven foot, Brooke. Why aren't these guys down on the block? And I'm not questioning Bud's offense. He's a heck of a coach. Very, very knowledgeable. Not taking, uh, these are no shots at, at uh, uh, Mike Budenholzer. I won't take shots at my guys on this show. But it's just, I'm just wondering. I don't, I don't understand with the offense sometimes. It just seems like they get out there and they get down the court and they just, 
they let it go and they just, they get lost in the sauce and um, they don't know what's going on. And you got guys running around and then eventually Giannis has to, you know, drive and, and, and gets fouled or more times than not, you know, according to the NBA uh, commits an offensive foul. Yeah, whatever. Okay. NBA officiating is a joke. It was put on display last night. If you didn't pay attention, uh, f- go online and Google or search the uh, Drew Holiday foul on uh, Porzingis. It's a joke. But we'll end on a positive note. Um, Bucks do play tonight. Uh, the Brewers are off tonight. Um, I am looking forward to um, the interaction with you guys. Um, drop a comment, um, follow us on Twitter, um, at Brew city pod, um, follow us on Facebook at Brew city lounge. Um, I love to hear from all of you guys. Um, I appreciate, um, the support, um, from all of you, everybody listening. Um, don't forget to subscribe, um, wherever you get your podcasts, Apple, Spotify, Amazon, Google, um, and then continue to follow the show on social media. I'm very interactive. Um, I, you know, live and die with this city. Um, I'm like you. I'm just like you. Every loss hurts, um, some more than others. And we celebrate every win. And we do it together. And hopefully with COVID, um, we can get into AmFam Field more and more throughout the year. And I'd love to meet up with you guys. Have a beer, watch some brewers, maybe have a, a, a you know, Pfizer forum. Uh, hopefully they're opening up uh, their numbers as well. Um, Noah drops in a few comments. Um, his number, his number two option is, and has to be drew. We agree with that. Noah. Um, I, I like Middleton, but I, you can't go wrong. You just can't go wrong. Um, uh, and I appreciate um, you guys dropping by those comments, Noah, Jake, uh, my dad, um, Adam, Adam, again, a couple Adams on here. Um, Sorry, Rhino, that Dario hurt your feelings. Uh, you know, we'll get through it together. Um, I really do appreciate it. Um, again, follow me on Twitter. I am your host. I'm going to be here um, every Tuesday and Friday. Some days might differ depending on who I got coming on. Um, so just pay attention on Twitter, on Facebook, um, maybe an Instagram. I'm not like an Instagram person, so I don't really know how that works. Um, so maybe we'll, we'll dive into some Instagram stuff. Um, but tune in on Tuesday. Um, if you are a Packer fan, and I hope that most of you are on this show that are tuning in, um, don't forget Sunday at noon, Title Town Lounge um, has its first episode. I am a co-host on there along with my buddy Rhino. Um, Bart Winkler from 1250 AM The Fan jumps on. We're going to talk Packers, pre-draft talk, you know, all that fun stuff about the Packers. Again, thank you guys. Follow uh, me on Twitter. Follow the, the podcast page on Twitter. Um, and don't forget, um, follow the new network on Twitter at lounge room net. Um, look forward to hearing, um, all of you guys, um, opinions on, on the upcoming season, go brewers, go bucks. Let's go Milwaukee. Thank you. Have a great night. Hey guys, thanks for tuning into the very first episode of the brew city lounge. I greatly appreciate it. Please do not forget to subscribe Apple, Spotify, Google, wherever you get your podcast. Please drop in, subscribe, give a follow, give a review. Greatly appreciated. Let's go, Milwaukee.